Welcome back to The Average Kitchen. Mark here, coming to you from Canada. Got a different review for you today. It's the brand new Ninja Espresso and Coffee Barista. So nice looking unit. You'll see here that we already have some condensation going in our pot because we did the prime feature. You have to prime both sides. You have to prime the, the pot and prime the uh, pod side as well. So we've already done that to avoid that and we didn't want to bore you with that. So we're going to do a couple different things. We're going to brew a pot of tea. We're going to brew some coffee, a pot. And then on the other side, we're going to do a couple of these pods. We've got a chocolate truffle flavored espresso pod. And then we have Tim Hortons caramel espresso. So that should be really good. They're little pods like this. Now, full disclosure, and I know some people chirp us sometimes of being too honest, uh, mistakes that we made. We order a ton of products, as you know, if you're a fan of, the of, of, our, of our show. And I don't always pay attention to all the details of what I'm ordering. So when this arrived and I had a look at it, I realized it does not take Keurig cups. Does not take Keurig cups. So you'll see here, it only takes the little guys, these ones. So keep that in mind. If you're a Keurig person, this will not work for you. So water reservoir on the back, all filled up. This is our coffee spout where you would put your filter in for your ground coffee. So we've got our pot here. Now, Jamie did a little bit of reading in the book while I was getting other things prepped and cleaned here and recognized that there is a hot plate here and you can see that there's a red light illuminated. And what, Jamie, two hours, correct? It'll keep... Um, two hours automatically it'll come on and you can turn it on again or adjust the time. Okay, so two hours. So what I'd like to do is just grab a couple. Now, Jamie was perplexed with this and Full disclosure, Jamie and I are not really big coffee and tea connoisseurs, but Jamie was kind of like, what do you mean you're gonna make a pot of tea? Now, in the Maritimes, like I'm originally from Nova Scotia, east part of Canada, very common to put a pot of tea on the stove with a couple tea bags or whatever and brew some tea. Now, I know our friends in the UK and we have been getting a lot of love from the UK and we love you as well. Tea is also very common. So let us know if this is a common thing to brew a pot of tea. So what I'd like to do, and I'm guessing here, two tea bags I think would be sufficient, make for some stronger tea. I'm gonna put those tea bags on the side and then I'm gonna put this on. All right, so I fumbled around with this little lid that has to line up because you can see there's a slight arrow here for the spout to pour it out. Got our two, two tea bags hanging. It would be <laughs> yeah, yeah, baby. Yeah. So now I was gonna do a half a pot. Ah, uh, let's do a half a pot. So now we got 28 ounces, which on the small icon, I don't know if Jamie can zoom in. You can see it shows half a pot, and then we're gonna. Right now the drip thing is closed, so we're gonna open that. It says start brew. You can also delay it. Now if you go ahead and set the time on this machine, you can pre make a pot of coffee. So when you wake up in the morning, it's ready to go but we're not gonna use the delay, and then we're just gonna hit start, and we're brewing, or as my mom would say, perking. Okay, so a couple things here. Hopefully you'll be able to see it. The light above the warm button comes on, showing that it's on. There's also the famous Ninja status button, and you can see it slightly glowing here. It'll go all the way through whenever that's done. It will continue to obviously heat up the water, and it's drawing it from the uh, reservoir, which, at, which is at the back, and um, we're maybe a quarter of the way done. All right, so you can see a beautiful pot of tea here, a half pot of tea. So I'm gonna close the drip tray. It says end. We were kind of waiting to see if it was gonna have this like famous ninja chime that always chimes when things are done, which it did not, but nevertheless, um, I'm gonna pour this for my wife who's heading out and it's winter here, it's very cold. So I think she'll appreciate this. All right, so maybe somebody would be interested in I just something I thought, I'm like, what if we just measure the temperature of uh, the actual tea itself? So we got it in Fahrenheit. I will switch it over to, to Celsius. Showing about 168 degrees Fahrenheit, 75 degrees Celsius. So that's pretty hot. Let's give these a few seconds to cool down. I'm gonna get that pot washed and uh, we'll try some of the uh, capsules and we're gonna brew a pot of coffee. All right, so gave that a quick wash. Let's try our tea. Still ripping hot. Very peppermint tea. <clears throat> very, very good. Uh, I'm no tea connoisseur, but it tastes fantastic. 
So let's get one of these pods going, a caramel espresso. All right, so we are now gonna switch over to this side by pressing this button. And uh, we just have, we wanna go to, so yeah, we have three options, espresso, lungo, and over ice. So we're gonna go espresso now. I know we don't have espresso cups and I apologize to all the authentic people out there. What's the matter with you? Are you stupid? What's the matter with you? What's the matter with you? So we're gonna drop our cup in. Then we're gonna hit start brew. Ooh, it looks really nice. All right, so that was very quick. Obviously it's an espresso, it doesn't make a ton of uh, liquid as it's not supposed to. So very good, but nowhere near as hot as the tea. Like not even close. Hold on. 130 Fahrenheit, 54 Celsius. So again, I apologize being not an expert. I don't know if that's the norm that espresso is quite a bit cooler than a pot of coffee but it tastes fantastic. So the other thing here, I'll, I'll show you two things. This is adjustable as well. You uh, can go up and down. So if you do have a small espresso cup, it can go up and down. And then this pulls out, I believe it's magnetized, pulls out and what happens there is, oh, maybe I have to open this first. Yes. So as soon as you open that, discharges the capsule into the capsule holder or reservoir. All right, so now we're into chocolate truffle, chocolatey and smooth espresso. So let's give that a try. Close that. We're on espresso, as you can maybe see from, depending on how well it zooms in. So it's still dripping, but again, that, we'll clean that drip tray afterwards, but let's try this one. So Jamie asked me off camera, how much caramel did you taste in the last? I'm like, not a ton, but we're not really reviewing the caramel. Do I taste a ton of chocolate in that? No, not really, but again, we're not reviewing, reviewing the chocolate. So what we've learned, Jamie and I, being non-baristas, the Lungo is the next size up, which according to the book is about three times the size volume-wise as the espresso. So just word to the wise, just so you know. So let's get this cleaned up and Jamie, now we're gonna brew a full pot of coffee, correct? All right. Okay, I just wanted to bring this up as maybe a point that I'm not a massive fan of. Chances are, your, wherever your water source is, your tap or whatever, may not necessarily be right beside your machine. So in order to do a full pot, and you can see on the, here it's indicated, this is like almost filled to the brim. So you really have to be steady eddy to carry that over and not spill it. Just wanted to bring that up. And then you've got to place it on this small hook behind the machine while not spilling it. So maybe the play is to grab the, yeah, that's the play, to use this little handle and then hook it down into place. All right, so next thing, Ninja supplied a couple filters. So we're gonna drop one of those in and hopefully our overhead GoPro will uh, pick that up. On the side here, Came with a little trusty measuring spoon. And on the spoon, it shows how many scoops it suggests depending on what size you're gonna do. So this is showing four to seven scoops for a full pot of coffee. So let's go um, and fill that up. Uno, dos, tres, and then cuatro. We're international here. Let's go with four, I think that's pretty fair. I'm gonna close that up. Now we're gonna switch back to this side, classic, and we're gonna scroll all the way down to 55 ounces, which is a full pot. You'll see here it does show closed. So we're, gonna, we're going to wanna open that up. It shows classic, we're ready to brew, and we're gonna hit start brew. So for fun, let me set a timer to see how long it takes, because again, maybe that's a point of discussion for some people. So we'll start a stopwatch, and we'll see how long that takes. Our pot of coffee is done. Oh, shoot, timer. Okay, give or take a couple seconds. Eight minutes and 13 seconds. I don't know, you tell me, is that a reasonable amount of time to brew a pot of coffee? Oh, so I see what happened there? I did not close that. So that's gonna be a mess. It's 
pour a cup here. Looks like coffee. It looks like coffee, smells like coffee. It's probably coffee. All right, let's do our uh, trusty probe. 80 degrees Celsius. So again, I don't know what the standard is for acceptable practice for temperature for a, a cup of coffee, but I mean, the, the steam is rolling off it. So Jamie and I are always think, okay, what other demos, whatever, what other tests can we do to show? So then the thought of, well, what if you just want one mug of tea or a Yeti cup full of tea or whatever? So I grabbed a Yeti, beautiful average kitchen stickers on it, as you can see. Jamie read the, front, ran, read the fine print on the bottom because I couldn't. 30 ounces is what this is. And when we look here, there is a setting for 28 ounces. So the thought was, okay, well, we should be able to put that underneath there. We'll throw a tea bag in it and we'll run it through a test. But of course we have to get rid of this, what I consider a mess. Jamie, I don't know if you had a look at this. It's a bit of a disaster. Again, not coffee guys, but like it's a bit of a disaster. So we're gonna get that cleaned up and get it ready. And then we're gonna make a uh, cup of tea. All right, we now have this unbelievably smelling cinnamon apple caffeine free herbal tea that we're gonna try. So it smells unreal. All right, so we're going to close this, which this has all been cleaned out. We're going to open that 28 ounce stir brew. All right, we're into a bit of a situation here. Either Ninja's 28 ounces is different than Yeti's 28 or 30 ounces or vice versa, because as you could probably see, we are maxed here. There's no way I'm not making a mess. No way. The next size down would have been, oh, let's close that. The next size down would have been 18 ounces, which is quite a bit smaller. Well, I mean, certainly not doing it with my left hand. I mean, the question is how, how did I do that? I mean, normally you would want that tea bag to sit in there a little bit longer to maximize your flavor. So I'm gonna give that a few minutes to cool down. All right, a couple things. We did not mention, and we don't really see a whole lot of value in demoing it, but it does have a milk frother. Flips out right here, and you can see, or here. So, if that's your thing, it has that available. Uh, let's give you some measurements. Height, total height, look at about 15 inches high and 12 inches deep. Now, that would just fit underneath my cabinets because of the under cabinet lighting uh, and the width just under 10 inches. So it's a big enough unit. What else can I tell you? It, uh, the price is very high in our opinion, $250 US. So pretty pricey. We're going to go through our average kitchen, average kitchen scoring here in a sec. It does have in the book, talk about deep clean cycles for both sides, both your pod side and your uh, brew through side. So there are deep cleaning cycles that they, talk, that they uh, explain in the book on how to do it. Everything, with the exception of the unit, everything is dishwasher safe, which Jamie loved because he's a dishwasher guy, as you're aware. Another thing Jamie did some research on, you can buy, any idea how much it costs, Jamie? What they call a permanent filter that goes in here so you're not putting those paper ones in all the time. I don't know what they look like, I don't know what they cost, but it is an option if, if some, that's gonna be something you're gonna do uh, regularly is brew coffee through that. That is an option for you. I don't know, maybe through Ninja or Amazon or whatever. It's, uh, it's available somewhere. So I talked about the price point, 250 US. Expensive, in my opinion. Bought this just before Christmas. We're shooting this video here in January, 2024. So the price may come down. I, we find that with Ninja, with new stuff comes out, because this is not even available in Canada yet. When new things come out, the price point is high, and then they start to come down. So maybe whenever you, you watch this video or whenever you are uh, shopping for this, maybe you'll get a better deal. So we gave that a 7.3 out of 10. Functionality, we felt like it functioned extremely well. Basically, like Jamie made the point off camera, it's two machines squeezed into one. It, it's a pod uh, a machine and it's also a brew through machine. So that's kind of a bonus. So we gave that an 8.5. Versatility, much to my last point as well. A lot of different options, a lot of different sizing options of different type size cups that you wanna do and so on and so forth. So we gave that an 8.7. The cleaning, Pretty easy. I mean, I clean everything by hand, but everything can go in the dishwasher. So we gave that an 8.3. Maybe even could have bumped that a little bit higher, but anyway, that's what we gave it an 8.3. Size, 8.4, I think for 
The size of the machine, it does a lot. It is a big footprint, especially if people have smaller kitchens, live in apartments uh, with a smaller amount of um, available square footage to put things. It may be a little bit large for you. This is a pretty decent sized kitchen, so it wouldn't be the end of the world. Over my shoulder here, we have, if you could probably see, we did a review on that. I don't even remember what the name of it is. It's, it's another Ninja, but it takes Keurigs. Uh, my wife's a tea drinker. She uses that every single day. It's very slim and easy to use, so it's pretty pretty slick. Anyway, size we gave it an 8.4. Quality, I mean, with Ninja, and again, we're not affiliated, not associated to Ninja whatsoever, but we've never had problems with Ninja uh, products, so we gave that an 8.8. Ninja makes quality stuff. So overall, average kitchen score, that gives you an 8.3 out of 10, which is a pretty good score for us because we are pretty critical on breaking down these products. All right, so I'm gonna give this, try this. Oh, fog in the glasses. Burnt my lips, ooh, that's nice tasting. Other than the size difference maybe being a little off, overall, really good product. So it's 2024, Jamie and I set a goal of 100,000 subscribers to get to by the end of the year. We're over 25,000 now, only you can help us by doing that, so please, Subscribe, hit the notification bell, leave us a comment. We'd love to hear from you. And we'd also love to hear where you're from as we're both world travelers. We'll see you on the next one.